Okay, this should be the last part of my series, looking at Karl Bau's uh, creation in the 21st century, a episode entitled A Preponderance of Evidence, featuring John uh, Hefner, a mathematician. So I'll get started. And then in our remaining moments, from the science of geology, a rarely mentioned fact is polystrate fossils. What he means by rarely mentioned, by the way, is the fact that the term polystrate fossil has absolutely no significant meaning at all in the fields of geology or paleontology. It's a creationist word, okay? The fossils, legitimate scientists refer to the fossils he's going to talk about as in situ fossils, okay? Uh, not polystrate. Po the term polystrate means multiple strata, implying that they are going up through multiple geologic ages, which they don't. In this case, petrified tree stumps, yes. logs, that are going vertically through numerous layers of uh, rock formation. Now, classically, we are told that it takes millions of years for these layers to form. That's and correct. in fact, it did take millions of years. However, these polystrate fossils stand in stark contrast to that because now the explanation is demanded. How could a tree have lasted for those millions of years waiting on these hypothetical ages to uh, develop and unfold. And this is not an isolated instance. Now, no. this is a well-publicized instance. Now I'm just confused. Is it rarely mentioned, or is it well-publicized? Uh, which is it, guys? Uh, you can't. I don't think you can really have it both ways, can you? Uh, the thing is, this is the deal. This polystrate, this, this storyline that the creationists like to throw out there, this polystrate fossil garbage. Uh, they're not polystrate fossils, okay? Uh, they are in situ, they're in place fossils. That means that either they were deposited or they were actually gr like things like growing trees uh, where the tree is rooted in a paleo soil that's also fossilized. Uh, one of the things like the Joggins, one of the famous ones, that's not the one that he's showing, uh, but the ones at the Joggins Cliff in Nova Scotia, um, there are trees growing in soil and then a new set layer of soil on top of those with trees rooted in that. Um, which was explained over a hundred years ago by a geologist named Dawson, explained how these were not the product of a global flood or even a massive local flood, but through relatively rapid deposition of sediments because of where they grew in a swamp. They grew in a swamp, and periodically a river would flood and would bury these trees. Okay, we see it today. Uh, there's there's a number of examples of this going on, in, like in the south. Uh, in places like in Louisiana, where there are trees that are, when, when the Mississippi River floods certain regions, it deposits sediment and it buries trees, um, at least large portions of trees. And then that settles down, new trees grow in place. So this is happening today. This is not a great mystery. This is no big problem for evolution. What they are trying to prey upon, the idea that they're, that they're bastardizing here, is this idea that there's some geologic clock. Um, based on sedimentation that you know one inch equals one million years or something like, like this like worldwide everywhere we go as soon as we see one inch of, of sediment we know that it's a million years to form or something which is not the case um, sometimes dozens of meters of sediment can be laid down uh, just in hours other times bare fractions of a millimeter are laid down in a century it depends on the region sometimes sediment is eroded away sometimes it's being built on i mean it, it varies worldwide um there are cataclysmic events there are floods local floods um and things like that there's no set sedimentation rate and that's what they i mean i've heard bow use this a lot i've heard this guy is now using it implying that somehow because we have sediment because we have sedimentary rock layers that those somehow imply millions of years of deposition, which they don't. First reported in the popular press in National Geographic August 1975, as they had an article on coal. And uh, it, one of the feature photographs was of this Lepidophloris. Uh, that, that is a reed. Now, not only a tree, it's not a heavy-duty, bulky, sturdy tree. Mm -hmm. It's a reed. It's a Lepidophloris. And uh, the internal structure of this, other than, uh, is a cavity with the basic shell around it. And it runs through, as you've already indicated, what uh, is normally interpreted by evolutionary standards as being 
200,000 to about 5 million years, depending on which text, which calculation you use. But uh, taking the lower number, how on earth could we get that reed to remain in place 200,000 years? Uh, the jury needs to know that the evidence is now in view from the closet. Mm -hmm. It is now out in the open, in the sunlight. Sometimes I wonder why Carl Bau feels the need to even have guests on his show, considering he usually uh, sort of steals their thunder and um, repeats exactly what they have to say. Uh, it's kind of interesting. But uh, I wanted to just, just to talk about this. First of all, again, these layers, no, nobody measured those layers that those trees are growing in and said, wow, these must be millions of years. I've taken millions of years to form. Nobody's ever done that. Uh, prove it. Uh, show show me the show me the peer-reviewed geology paper that says that that the, that the layers around that tree took millions of years to form. No claim like that has ever been made. It's a load of shit. Uh, the second thing, what the fuck? That's freaking weird. Um. I, anyway, the other point that he makes is that uh, these lepidophloas are a reed? They're a fucking reed? No, they're not a reed. Lepidophloas is a is a lycopodium type. It's a it's a uh, what do you call it? Club moss. In fact, I've got one. Not a not a lepidophloum. I've got a club moss right here. Um, this is a dried one that I was going to press, but it I. Uh, forgot and left it laying out, and it dried nicely. Um, these are one of the most primitive groups of vascular plants. Uh, these were pretty much the first type thing that could grow tree-like um, on, on, on Earth. They're not hollow. Lepidophloas is not hollow. He's talking about, he's mixing it up with equicetum, another primitive vascular plant that are hollow. Lepidophloas was solid. Now, they have hollow trunks. Um, they've found fossilized where the trunks have been hollowed out because the, the center of it rotted away easily. Um, so when they died and they stood in the swamp for decades, the center tended to rot away. But upright growing, they were not some flimsy reed that he's trying to imply. Otherwise, they wouldn't have gotten tens of meters tall. Uh, kind of makes sense, right? Anyway, so it's just he's just talking... Uh, out of his ass, uh, and he does this w with on this topic extensively. I visited that site. We got special permission, and then we got special permission for one of our associates, Professor Ian Juby. Ah, yes, Professor Juby, the man who borrows stuff then breaks it, like in this classic. Uh, I borrowed that for today because we want to detect. We're we're going to do some ape detection, All ape right. and human detection. Ooh, okay. To mold that, we have at the museum a full mold mock-up, recast mock-up of this, but what is additionally staggering is this runs 10 feet, and then in the layers above it runs 6 feet more at a diagonal angle, meaning that all of this is a system of water flow and deposition, and it is associated with adjacent layers that have been identified worldwide. So the jury needs to know all of this not only takes us back to the time of creation and the flood, but to the very event of the flood. Mm -hmm. So here we have the data and the event all in view. See, now this, this again is something that's really typical. Um, it's not only common creationist fare. Bao likes to use this a lot, um, which is to take a legitimate scientific observation and then just outright claim that it somehow supports his viewpoint um, when it when it, it simply doesn't. Um, so right here. So what, what's what's he what's he suggesting? So he's looking at this this lepidophloas trunk, um, and he's saying that unlike what the evolutionists are trying to pretend, um, this is evidence of water burial. Um, this is evidence of sedimentation carried by water. Uh, you, you you see what I'm saying? Uh, in other words. The evidence is exactly what, well, every paleontologist who would study that would say is there. But he's claiming that it's special evidence for a global flood. 
if that makes sense. And and again, lying about this this deposition rate somehow that this deposition rate somehow is is means something. Um, I, I'm going to say this again. I challenge him. Show a single geologist that would go to that site in Tennessee and look at the layers alongside that trunk and go, wow, this this must be, oh, I'd say, approximately a million year span. And, and nobody's going to do that. It's It simply doesn't exist. He's making that up and lying about it. All right, I'm going to end this one now. I, he does go on a little bit more, repeating some of the same stuff again, and then his usual sum up. Um, and it, 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 you can watch the video yourself. I don't need to fill, I don't need to point out what's wrong with the rest of what he says. It's the same as what he's already been saying. And I've already mentioned, um, I'm going to, the next one I'm going to go after, I'll put a link down below for, um, I encourage you all to watch the series. Uh, it stars the Joseph Mastropalo, um, one of the, one of the funnest whack jobs he's ever had on the show. And it, it's going to be a blast. So, uh, take care.